Hi, welcome to this online NLP and coaching training. Very often I get people that say they'd love to come and do the live training, but they either can't take time off work or they just can't get to the training dates that are available. And so that's why this training has been made available to you, so that you can do it in the comfort of your own home, in your own timings, and you will experience most of what we do during the live training. And as an added bonus, if you decide that you would like to come do the seven day live training at some point in time in the next 12 months, then you'll actually get a discount based on the fact that you've already paid for this online course. So if you'd like to do that, then just contact me and I can give you more information about that. On the basis of that, I am available for you to contact me. If you'd like to ask some questions, uh, you can always come and join us at our Facebook group as well. And, you know, so although you're doing the courses online training, you know, please do feel free to ask questions. We are here to help and to support you and to help you get the most out of this course. And so you will experience this training in a number of ways. There's going to be some face video uh, as we're doing right now. There will also be some live demonstrations. So we'll actually take you to uh, some dates that uh, or, or recordings that we've done of live courses where you'll be able to see demonstrations being done or how to do the exercises. And then of course there'll also be some video capture uh, as we look at some of the techniques and some of the theory behind it. So I really hope that you get the most out of this course. And to do so, I invite you to do all the exercises. You know, take the techniques, practice them on yourself and practice them with friends and with family as you learn and, and start making these learnings become unconscious. And in fact, we're going to talk about learnings and the stages of learning shortly. As we go through the training, I would like to share a number of stories with you, if I may. And in fact, why don't we start with a couple now? Many years ago, around the 1950s, there was a Bulgarian professor by the name of Georgi Lazanov. And I don't know if you remember being at school or being at university and, you know, the, the teacher or the professor might say that you've got to sit still. You know, you, you had the desks around you, didn't you? And you have to sit at your desk and, you know, in some classes you might even have had to sit with your hand on your lips. You know, you certainly can't talk and you know, you've got to put your hand up if you'd like to ask a question. And, you know, don't have fun. Oh, no, 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 not allowed to have fun. You know, it's serious business education. And there's a, a way, isn't there, to teach? Well, Georgie thought that there must be a better way. And in fact, could you imagine that you might have seen this on a video, on a TV program, walking down a corridor, maybe at a university, and you've got this long passageway, and every now and then, at each one of the classrooms, there'll be a door. And in the door, there'll be like a portal window. And you could walk past the door, and you could look through this window, and you'll notice the professor or the teacher speaking at the students, telling them this information they need to learn. And you could walk down further down the passage and look through the next window, and you'll see something very similar. However, further down the passage, there's a noise, there's fun, there's laughter, there's music. How can that be? And as you walk closer, the music starts to get louder and the laughing gets louder and you look through the window. And there are these students that are actually learning in a fun and friendly environment. Well, you see, Georgie was this professor who decided that there must be a better way to teach, a better way to educate. And so he utilized music and colors and having fun and games and laughter within his education. And so late 50s, he got offered a position at a major university in the U.S. Now, back in those days, of course, uh, politically correctness was not so politically correct. And there were these other professors, and they might have said, who's this foreigner coming to 
our university, teaching our students, because we know how to teach. Well, Georgie just did what he did. His students had fun, they were laughing, they listened to music. And so these other professors, they, well, Georgie's students continually got higher marks. And these other professors thought, well, Georgie must be doing something wrong. Because how is it possible? Because you know, they knew how to teach. And so they went to the dean. And they said, dean, this foreign guy obviously is not doing things right. Because, you know, the, his, his students, they seem to have too much fun. And so they said, Dean, we want to catch him out and we want to show him for the fraud that he is. And the Dean said, sure, well, you know, it's only right then that we get Georgie in so that he could defend himself. And so they decided that between the different professors, Georgie included, they were going to have an exam or a test to really show up that what Georgie was doing was not the right thing. And Georgie was all up for that. And so they had to decide what the subject was going to be. And so they decided to do it on French. So none of the students had any, ever learnt any French. And they said, OK, they're going to give each of the classes a number of French words. And the students will be, have to be able to spell them and utilize them within a sentence uh, correctly. And of course, again, you could imagine walking down the passageway, noticing through the windows at each one of these classes, how these professors might have been training their students. Maybe even spelling phonetically. The students learning as parrots, reciting back what they see or hear. Whereas further down the passage, there was that fun and that laughter and those games. And sure enough, there was Georgie training in his style of teaching. And so came the day of the exam, the test. They even brought in some independent testers, judges, to make sure that everything was above board and so that they could really show Georgie up for being a fraud. And so they did the exam. And these other professors, their students, got on average around about 70% or so. And Georgie's students got on average around 90%. Wow. Now something must have been wrong, these other professors thought. So a few months later, they decided they were going to have the test again. They were going to rewrite the test. And so the results came back. And lo and behold, these other professors' students, they got on average around about 60 or so percent. And Georgie's students, well, they got on average around 90 percent. Now, these other professors, they were a little bit shocked. And so they thought, around six months later, they said, well, let's do this test again. And again, they tested the students not having learnt or recited or revised. Again, they tested the students and the other professor's students got on average around about 40%. And lo and behold, Georgie's class got on average around 90%. You see, through his accelerated learning and through his, his teachings, his students managed to learn a lot better, a lot more, foster, having fun, and had better retention of the information. Isn't that interesting? So accelerated learning is a wonderful way to learn. Now it reminds me, to be fair, of another story. One of the people that we'll be learning about as we go through the course is a gentleman by the name of Milton Erickson. Now Erickson was a master communicator. He was a medical doctor, but also a hypnotherapist, and he practiced hypnosis for, well, over 60 years. And he taught many students. And one of these students, and we'll call his student John. John, although learning from Milton Erickson how to communicate with the unconscious mind, was also a student at university. 
Now, John, for all intents and purposes, was a model student. And the professor, near the final exam, the professor asked him, he said, John, how are you going to do in the final exam? And John said to the professor, Professor, you know what? I think I'm going to do very well, thank you. Because I think you've got around ten questions. And I think those ten questions are going to be... And he actually mentioned what the ten questions were going to be in the test. Of course, the professor was taken back because he wouldn't expect something like that from John. Because John must have, well, you know, gone into his drawer and found the exam. Because how else could he know? Now John said, but professor, I didn't. The professor didn't believe him and he mar marched him down to the dean's office. And he said, dean, you know, yes, John. I asked him how he was going to do in the training or how he was going to do in the test. And... He proceeded to tell me the ten questions that I have in the test. And John said, but Dean, I can prove that I didn't cheat. And so if somebody just fetches my notebook, to which they did, and you know those notebooks with the margins in the side. And John took his notebook and he showed the professor that next to some of his notes there was one asterisk. And next to others, there were two and three and some others four and some five and some six. However, only next to ten subjects or areas or sets of notes were there seven asterisks. And John decided that those were going to be the ten questions. You say John had this wonderful sensory acuity. He had the ability to listen to the professor, to notice when he was repeating certain things, to notice when maybe he gave special emphasis to certain topics, really paying wonderful attention to what the professor was doing, saying. And so the dean looked at John and said, you know, John, that is absolutely amazing. And somebody who can pay such wonderful attention during the training. You don't even need to write the exam. You can just have an A anyway. How cool is that? Being able to pay such great attention to what the professor was sharing. That in fact, he, although he knew what the questions were. And he probably, you would imagine, then knew what the answers were. He didn't even have to write. And he got a perfect A. And so I'm going to tell you a number of stories as we go through the training. And at some point in time when we discuss metaphors, we're going to see why, for what purpose, and how they actually work. And so that you can become a wonderful storyteller as well. So as we go through the training, we're going to uh, cover a number of themes and so let's hop on over and let's discuss some of these themes first of all as we go and move into the training now.